Hello my loves and welcome to a new reading vlog. I hope everyone is doing well. I have a lot to read this week. So nothing new there, but I have all these still to read that were from my July TBR. So um, let's see if this happens. I can't even get started tonight. I should mention it's Tuesday. Can't even start on any of these right now though. Um, I've just finished work and I am finishing out my last reading vlog so I can hopefully get that uploaded tonight. And then afterwards, if there's time, I might pick one of these up. I think I'm probably gonna start with, with The Fire on High or Traitor's Blade, um, maybe. So I'm gonna sort out the last vlog and then I'll come back to you when I have picked something up. I also have had some more parcels. I mentioned that in the last vlog. Um, so I'm gonna open those as well, probably later on. I'm gonna get this vlog done first and then birthday haul part two. <laughs> Massey, you'll make her dizzy. Then you go the other way and then it's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, she's gonna be so dizzy. <laughs> Did you see her wobble? Yeah, I saw her wobble. Okay, so I received more parcels and Tibbs will be joining us for this haul. <laughs> Okay, I've tried to angle it so you could still see Tiberius. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm sorry if the lighting's weird as well. It's like early evening. It's now Wednesday. I got into a whole palaver with the vlog last night, so I didn't get to do this. And then after work today, me and G went out and uh, hung out in the park and read a little bit. We actually did read. I have this footage to prove it. <laughs> I thought you were pretending to read. I'm not pretending. I, I thought you were like doing this. <laughs> no. Is this the end? Like the... I'm just starting. Hello guys. <laughs> well actually it just shows me opening the book. But I read 30 pages. No thoughts so far. But enjoying it. I will tell you more about it. Probably tomorrow after I've read some more. But yeah, as I was saying. More parcels arrived. The birthday fun continues. I am not going to be putting a counter in for every time I say birthday in this vlog because yeah, I regretted that in the last one. <laughs> the first one I see is The Bone Witch by Rinja Pico. I mentioned this in a video not that long ago, actually probably a few months ago. I know that it includes elemental magic and necromancy. Very eager to try this and this cover anything foiled, you know me. Oh, oh, also the other one, I think I know who bought me these because the other one is Our Dark Duet by V.E. Schwab, which is the second book in the, I want to say, Monsters of Verity series. The first one was The Savage Song, which I really enjoyed and then I just never continued and finished out the duology and I've been meaning to for so long, so I think I think this has to be Jade, right? Yes, it's Jade. Um, Jade says, you put Schwab on your wish list and expected me not to buy it for you. <laughs> what a joke. Happy birthday, lovely from Jade. <laughs> I mean, I should have known. <laughs> and then the other one, she says, and a random one just because I love you. Happy birthday and I'm sorry it's late. Girl, you did not even need to get me anything. Don't you dare apologize for it being late. She spoiled me. Thank you so much, Jade. I am very excited. For both of these. Although I have heard that this one has broken some people, so a little bit nervous, but I really enjoyed the first one. Oh, this one. I've been meaning, I've been wanting to read this one for so long, possibly since like Contemporary Thon last year, the beginning of last year, because it's Everything All at Once by Katrina Leno. I think I'm going to absolutely love this one, although it does seem a little, a little bit heavy, simply because. Um, it says here, Lottie Reeves is not a risk taker. She plays it safe and avoids all the ways she might get hurt. But when her beloved aunt Helen dies of cancer, 
Lottie's fears about life and death start spiralling out of control. And Helen wasn't a typical aunt, she was the author of the best-selling Alvin Hatter series about siblings who discover the elixir of immortality. In her will, Aunt Helen leaves one writing project just for Lottie. It's a series of letters, but when the letters reveal an extraordinary secret about the inspiration for the Alvin Hatter series, Lottie finds herself faced with an impossible choice, one that will force her to confront her greatest fears once and for all. I love the summer of salts, Katrina Leno's writing is just simple but beautiful and atmospheric and there's usually some speculative elements or there was in summer of salt anyway but i am excited thank you so much to who got this sam thank you so much sam you did not have to but i really appreciate it thank you so so much and if you'd like to me like to link me your social media or um dm me somewhere and i can say thank you uh, personally that would be amazing but in this one it's a <laughs> okay. The illustrated edition of Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. Oh my god, this was only just only just came out and I I was going to purchase this one for myself. I have the first illustrated edition in this series and I love this series so much. You'll probably know by now. I need to see the illustrations though. Like look at these illustrations. I don't think this is a spoiler for the series or anything this this couple of pages, but Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, Ketrican. <laughs> also, the end papers have the map of the six duchies. I love, oh my God, who got me this? I should have known, it was Becca. Becca says, happy birthday, Codacious B. I hope you have a fab day and receive all the books from Becca. Thank you so, so much, girl. She also didn't just get me this, which is already far too much. She also got me a graphic novel that I've been very excited to try. This is Blackbird, book one in the Great Beast series by Sam Humphreys and Jen Bartel. I put this on my wish list because um, Jade, <laughs> Jade read it and really enjoyed it. I'll try not to, my ring light is kind of causing a glare. I'll try not to spoil this, but the art, oh my days. I'll try and get some better shots of the artwork for this, which hopefully you'll be seeing right now. But this one says, magic is like water your heart is a fountain there's a magical world hiding in los angeles and nina rodriguez knows it when an enormous otherworldly beast kidnaps her sister nina must confront her past and her demons not to mention the ruthless cab cabals in charge of the city's magic to get her sister back and reclaim her life so it is a fantasy graphic novel as well and oh the art though and i know jade really enjoyed the story too so i have Oh, I'm so happy to have a graphic novel, like another graphic novel to add to the TBR and and this and this though and this though. Thank you so much, Becca. Oh my god. Oh, this one. Oh, yay! I now have my own edition of Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Oh no, this is in German. <laughs> what? Oh no! <laughs> Oh, this is from Lucy. Lucy says, hi Cody, happy late birthday. I hope you enjoy this book. It's one of my favorites and I feel like everyone needs some cute romance at the moment and you've left your Instagram. Thank you so much, Lucy. But it was my mistake. I, I must have put the German version on my wish list. I am so sorry. I have already read this book though and you, I agree it is one of my favorites too. I really, really enjoyed it. I did take, I think it's in German. I did take German at school. So maybe, yeah, I think it's German. I could actually brush up on my German again and read it, but that, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to message you and explain <laughs> that it has arrived in German, but I'm going to keep it. I did the exact same thing with Misery <laughs> by Stephen King. I um, have the Spanish version of that because I put that on my wish list, not realizing, and Bobby bought me that for, my, for a gift once. <laughs> so I will be keeping this, even if I can't actually read it. <laughs> Thank you so much to Lucy. Anyway, you did not have to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, I'm an idiot. I am sorry. <laughs> okay, and then this one. Oh, okay. This is another one that I've been wanting to read on uh, Chelsea's recommendation, which is The Last True Poets of the Sea by Juliet Drake. All I know is that this is a contemporary about a character who is trying to find a shipwreck and there's a female-female romance, I believe, as well. And Chelsea just talked about this so much and had me hyped so much for this. 
and I'm so happy to finally have a coffee and to be able to read it. This one's from Kitty. Thank you so much, Kitty. Kitty says, happy birthday, Cody. Hope you had a lovely day. I really did. Thank you so much. I'm always happy to add in some more contemporaries, especially, you know, those with some female-female romance because all about that. <laughs> we then have, ooh, this is from Bobby. The gift note's right on top because I have it and we both need to read it from Bobby. Ooh, girl, you did not. You did. She got me Uzumaki by Junji Ito. I really loved Gyo. I, I really have been wanting to read all of his horror mangas. And all I know about this one is that it's about spirals. So it says, Kurozo Cho, a small fog-bound town on the coast of Japan, is cursed. Their town is haunted not by a person or being, but a pattern. Uzumaki, the spiral, the hypnotic secret shape of the world, fall into a whirlpool of terror. Oh, I am hype. I will show you the end papers. So I'm thinking this is going to be more of a psychological horror than body horror. Nope, maybe not. <laughs> Looking at the at this side possibly not um but i am so happy to have thank you so much bobby i'm gonna message you and say thank you i know she's also pre-ordered me the sequel to rage of dragons by evan winters as well which comes out later this year girl you always do too much you constantly do too much thank you so much bobby i'm gonna message you and then oh she said she has it and we both need to read it buddy read buddy read i'm gonna I will message her and ask, that would make more sense. <laughs> and then this wee one arrived today as well. I'm not sure if this, this might not be a book. It doesn't really seem book shape. So let's, let's see. Oh, it is a book, it is a book. Oh, it's The Deep by River Solomon. I have seen so many amazing reviews for this recently and I am eager to try it. Do you know what? I'm gonna read it physically and listen to the audiobook because I know David Diggs. Um, narrates the audiobook and I love him so much. So this one is from Bookish Harry. Thank you so much Harry. Harry says, hi I love your channel and watching videos always cheers me up when I'm feeling anxious or down. Thank you. That means the world. I hope you're doing okay. Oh my god you did not have to but thank you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna read you the back because I don't feel like I can do a better job of summarizing what this is about. It pretty much is perfectly said here. It says, yes who holds the memories for her people? water-dwelling descendants of pregnant African slave women thrown overboard by slave owners who live idyllic lives in the deep. Their past too traumatic to be remembered regularly is forgotten by everyone save one, the historian. The demanding role has been bestowed on Yetu. Yetu remembers for everyone and the memories, painful and wonderful, traumatic and terrible and miraculous, are destroying her. And so she flees to the surface, escaping the memories, the expectations and the responsibilities, and discovers a world her people left behind long ago. You've probably heard all about this. I'm sure you've seen somebody review this recently. And I am just so excited to try this for myself. I know it's gonna be a hard read, obviously. It talks about generational trauma, but I've heard that it's beautifully told, really impactful for what it is. And I have heard also amazing things about the audiobooks. I'll be reading and listening together for the full experience. Thank you so much, Harry. This, I am, I have no words. I'm excited. Thank you. Those are the parcels I had to open. I did also have a couple um, arrive earlier, but these were from Lauren and I was actually on a call, like a work call with Lauren at the time when these arrived and she told me that she had sent me them. So I got a couple of books from Lauren too, who's absolutely amazing. And if you haven't discovered her bookstagram, I'll link that in the description of this video. She is I just love her the most. <laughs> so basically, she knows that I just received the first book in this series, which is Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. So she bought me the second and third books, Rebel Spring and Gathering Darkness. So I now have the first three in this series so I can binge um, read these. But she loves this series and I know that uh, Beth has been uh, going through these pretty, well, going through this series pretty quickly. So it gives me some confidence that I'll be able to do the same. I'll also link Beth's channel in the description. You should check her out if you haven't already. But a huge thank you again to Lauren. You did not have to at all. You already, you already spoiled me, girl. 
But I was, I've just been spoiled by everybody, honestly. I'ma try and not get soppy because I'm feeling like that today. If I feel, if I seem a little bit low energy, I'm just, I'm just having a day. But this has definitely cheered me up and seeing, um, hanging out with G in the park after work as well definitely cheered me up. And yeah, I have, I have no, nothing to complain about really, do I? <laughs> like, I may have been having a bit of a crappy day, but <laughs> you guys, Thank you so, so much. I think I might actually do a book haul this month, well, in August, because I got some um, some money from family members and stuff and they told me to buy books, so I'm uh, gonna be buying more books <laughs> at some point. Not that I need any, <laughs> but right now I'm gonna go message everybody that send me books and say thank you. And then I think I'm gonna get in the bath tonight. Oh, that sounds, that sounds ideal, like the perfect way to finish off today and continue on with The Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. As I mentioned, I'm only like 30 pages in, so not really any thoughts. Just getting introduced to our um, main character, Imani, who is a teenage mum in school and she has passion for cooking. That's all I really have so far for you, but I'm hoping to um, go for a big chunk of this tonight and then I will give you first thoughts and everything properly tomorrow. Hello my loves, it's now Saturday. I haven't really updated you much because I haven't really been reading much. Instead, Massey and I binge watched the whole of season two of Umbrella Academy yesterday, so that's what I've been doing. Okay, actually I have read a little bit. So I have continued on with, with the fire on high. I am now on page 208, so around the halfway point of this, and I'm enjoying it a lot. It's very character driven and I love our main character Imani. She's got a good head on her shoulders and we love to see it and also there is a romance brewing that I, I just want good things for her. I want her to go to Spain with her culinary class and oh god it's making me hungry as well. That's pretty much all my thoughts so far. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have more thoughts when I actually finish it but I'm really enjoying it the way that it talks about culture as well and the, her family dynamics. The good and the messy, the way it talks about parenting as well, not that I'm a parent, but like I said, our main character's got a good head on her shoulders and seeing her, the way that she talks about her um, daughter and the way that she <laughs> keeps correcting herself whenever she's going to use like a slow word, she'll like just catch herself at the last minute. It's really cute and I'm enjoying it a whole lot. I would say that I would try some of the recipes in here, but who are we kidding? Massey might, if I gave them to him. <laughs> But the way that food is talked about and the fact that she's in a culinary class so it's you know seen as an art but it also um, whenever anyone will eat her food it will like evoke an emotion it's just it's making me very hungry basically and I wasn't sure exactly what to expect with Elizabeth Acevedo's writing in this one because I've only read The Poet X which was told in verse but I really like it it's given me the same kind of um, feelings, the same kind of connection as um, the Poet X did. So I hope to finish this today. I hope so. <laughs> and considering it's now the first of the month, I have failed at this TBR to no one's surprise. I did start Dreams of Gods and Monsters though, because I was like, you maybe should start this huge book. Maybe, possibly, possibly the right time to start it, like a day before the end of the month. But anyway, I made it to page 10. I know. I'm so proud. <laughs> so I have nothing to say on this one yet. I did go on Spark Notes and see, um, well, I had to remember, remind myself what happened in the second book. Um, but I love Lainey Taylor's writing and I like the series. So I'm probably gonna still read this in um, August. Well, this month, it's the first. So yeah, wish me luck for my Wheel of TBR, which I'm actually gonna film today. Um, so <laughs> before I do that though, you never guess what happened. Some more parcels arrived, some more, I'm assuming, like birthday presents. My God. So, this vlog is not really a reading vlog, is it? It's a book haul masquerading as a reading vlog. Let's get into this. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I got fresh water, who sent me this? Okay, this is by A Quickie Amezi. I just read their YA debut pet 
last week for the reading rush absolutely loved it new favorite book possibly new favorite author because i loved it so much and i believe this one is adult so the note says from bridget thank you so much bridget bridget says happy belated b day i read this recently and loved it you may also have a pre-order on its way later this year because how can I not send an epic fantasy to the person who gave me the courage to try it myself, Bridget? Oh my god, I'm so happy you tried High Fantasy and enjoyed it. Oh my god, thank you so, so much. You also pre-ordered me something? Too much, but thank thank you so, so much for Freshwater and you've left your at as well. So I will be messaging you later today to say thank you. In this one we follow a Nigerian girl called Ada and I believe it focuses on mental health. As she grows up, she develops uh, multiple personalities. Yes, their troubled child begins to develop separate selves and is prone to fits of anger and grief. When Ada grows up and heads to college in America, a traumatic event crystallizes herself into something more powerful. As she fades into the background of her own mind, these altars, now protective, now hedonistic, take control, shifting her life in a dangerous direction. I am so interested in this. I want to read this immediately. Thank you so much, Bridget. I can't wait. Thank you. And thank you for pre-ordering me something as well. Some epic fantasy. I don't even know what that could be, but thank you so, so much. Oh, and this next one, I've only just heard of this. A friend recommended it to me and I think it sounds like my kind of thing. So it's Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I will check the pronunciation when I come to read it. And it's about a 36-year-old woman and she's never had a boyfriend. She's been working there for 18 years. So we just follow her, get to know her. And I've heard it's really funny and like satirical, also very sad in places and compelling, but it's so short. So I'm very, very intrigued by this. Who, I hope there's a note. <laughs> oh yes, we have a note from Oscar. Thank you so much, Oscar. Oscar says, happy belated birthday. Thank you. I've heard that this book is so good and I'm on Otaku, so I hope you enjoy it. I will let you know, friend. <laughs> Best wishes from Barcelona, from Oscar. Thank you so much, Oscar. And thank you for leaving me your apps as well so I can message you and say thank you properly. But I really appreciate it and I'm really excited about this one. Thank you again, Oscar. We have Hardback and it's such a fun age by Kylie Reed. Oh my God, I was gonna buy this myself because I'm going to be joining the Unfriendly Black Hotties book club for this one, which is this is their pick for August. Talked about it a little bit in last week's vlog. Well, actually, no, I think I just mentioned it in last week's vlog, but this will be going on the TBR definitely. And I was gonna get a physical copy as I mentioned. So thank you so much to whoever this, ah, it was Steph, Steph, my love. Thank you so much. Steph says, happy belated birthday, girl. I'm so sorry this is late. You shush, you shush, you did not have to. <laughs> I hope you enjoy though. Love you always, Steph. Love you more, girl. I'm gonna be, what's happening you? Oh my God, end papers. <laughs> So I know this one's going to be a very hard-hitting contemporary. Um, it talks a lot about uh, white privilege and performative allyship, tokenism, that kind of thing. And we follow a character called Amira who's apprehended at a supermarket for kidnapping the white child she's actually babysitting. And her employer, Alex, who's a feminist blogger, resolves to make things right. Um, then there is a surprising connection between the two, uh, which sends them on a crash course that will up every upend everything they think they know about themselves, each other, and the messy dynamics of privilege. I think this is going to teach me a lot and also be a, you know, enjoyable, entertaining read at the same time. I'm 100% down for this. Excited to be reading this in August. And thank you so much, Steph, for getting me a physical copy. So I definitely can join in on the Unfriendly Black Hotties book club, which I was going to do anyway. But thank you so much, Steph. I will link the book club um, down in the description as well if you'd like to check out check it out if you are planning on reading this or if you have it and you'd like to join in for the month of August. All links and everything in the description, including Steph's channel as well. Check out Steph, she's awesome. Love her the most. Ooh, oh my, oh my god, oh my, god. oh my. Okay, so we have Tomi by Junji Ito, which is a horror manga. I just, I just got this one from Bobby as well. So like, I have. Is there just the three of these in this these editions? I think so. But so excited, I'm actually gonna be buddy reading this with Bobby. Link to her channel down in the description too. <laughs> this one, I believe, is about a succubus. A femme fatale, yes, with long black hair and a beauty mat just under her left eye. She can seduce nearly any man and drive them to murder as well. While one lover seeks to keep her for himself, another grows terrified of the immortal succubus. But soon they realize that no matter how many times they kill her, the world will never be free of Tomi. Oh my God, I am, I am so excited for this. Who, who? Oh, I, there's another one. 
on, there's another one in here. My God, someone really went all out and spoiled me. I mean, everyone spoiled me. You guys are the best. But now this one as well was in here, which is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And I've been eyeing this one up as well as Mexican Gothic. I think that's by the same author, let me double check. <laughs> yes, I didn't make that up. They also wrote Mexican Gothic, which I do wanna try as well. But this one is um, fantasy, I believe. It's set in a small town in Southern Mexico and we follow a character who accidentally frees an ancient Mayan god of death who offers her a deal in return for Cassiopeia's help in recovering his throne, he will grant her whatever she desires. Success will make her every dream come true, but failure will see her lost forever. It sounds really good. I've seen this floating around, I've seen some good reviews for this, and I don't think I've ever read anything that takes from like Mayan mythology, like Mayan God of Death. Very excited. Oh my days, who was this? Rebecca, Rebecca, you did tell me. Thank you so much, Rebecca, you, you, Thank you. Rebecca says, hello Cody, consider both of these books a belated birthday gift and also just a treat from me. Dude, I hope you enjoy both of these books. Keep staying <laughs> all kinds of safe <laughs> and well. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I'll be dropping you a message too. Oh my days. Look at all these fabulous sounding new books to add to the shelves. I should probably do that now. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to try and figure out how I'm gonna fit all of those <laughs> on those shelves and then get to filming my wheel of tbr i actually have to make a few new prompts and get it back up on the wall and film that i'm hoping to post it tomorrow that's the plan so yeah let's um let's rearrange these shelves i should probably add these all on my goodreads tbr list as well this might take me a while i feel like i should do a, like an obligatory trying of uh well trying to lift the stack but I don't think I actually can. <laughs> I'll try and chin it. I'll try and chin it and see if this works. Okay, okay. Let's go, let's go. Ooh. Oh my God. I have to move out, move out a bit. Okay, I did it, I did it, I did it. Put them down. <laughs> but thank you all so much. Now I'm gonna go scan all these and put them all on the shelves. <laughs> Roll, uh, what do you call it? A time lapse, that's what it's called, time lapse. Wow, three years on YouTube. <laughs> oh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> You mean bread and butterflies? Oh, yes, of course. I hmm? Tuesday. So the last time I spoke to y'all I was about to film a wheel of TBR. Went very well. Link in description. So I'm gonna spoil that for you now because I'm gonna show you what's been picked. So I picked out these ones. This month's TBR is looking freaking good. Um, she was very nice to me though this month so I'm a little bit terrified as to what's gonna go down in September although things are gonna hopefully be a bit different. I, I'm yet to figure it out. We'll just see what happens but yeah I didn't do a whole lot over the weekend besides editing. We went out for a nice walk though on Sunday to the show as you've probably seen and also I changed up the reading plans and I picked up Assassin's Quest as you've probably seen. That bath bomb was so good. I don't think it showed up on camera but it was like really glittery as well. Beautiful but it completely stained my bath. So <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend it but I started this one because 
I thought it would probably, probably be a better idea than continuing on with Dreams of Gods and Monsters because I read like what the first two chapters or something and even though I need to read both of these in the month I I need to read this one sooner because we have a live show for this like come on Cody so I'm not going to read these at the same time um, but I will be picking this back up in August at some point <laughs> so I'm only 150 pages into Assassin's Quest I wanted to get back to it as soon as possible <laughs> I'm really enjoying this reread I love this series so much I feel like it can be summed up though by saying poor Fitz because our main character Fitz oh god he just has it so rough oh no my bookmark fell out <laughs> that doesn't happen when you doggy it I'm just saying I'm just I know I don't do that anymore but I'm just saying it's simpler times <laughs> so I'm not going to talk to you too much about this one because I'll just save it for next week's vlog where I'll be hopefully reading a lot more of this because it is a beast it's over 800 pages although it's a reread so I won't have to pay as close attention but the beginning of this I knew it was gonna it was gonna hit me like after we finished Roll Assassin I was like oh I know what's to come um, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything but I do want to say that this series I think depicts depression very well I know that Ashley picked up on that as well in the second book and oh this one though <laughs> also the world is very much expanded in this one I'm very eager to talk to all the hosts about it I've been enjoying um, watching everyone's vlogs where they've been reading the beginning of this because I know what's to come and I'm feeling all smug. <laughs> I'm just eager to see everyone's reactions. I also though, I did finish a book this week. I did finish with The Fire on High. This was lovely. This was just what I wanted to read this week. I'll say that the plot is very much expected but in this case that's a good thing because I'm just happy with well how this book storyline went. It just made me so... I, if you can be proud for a character, I'm proud for this fictional character. She struggles a lot she sacrifices a lot but she's such a hard worker she has such a passion for what she does and she handles her responsibility so well even though she's still she still very much is a teen though that still does come through but obviously she's had to mature very quickly and she just oh she's a superstar she deserves all of the good things in the world ever <laughs> i just have a lot of respect for this fictional character <laughs> but this book also does talk about lots of things even though it's very wholesome and quite a nice story there is obviously some social commentary in here it does talk about how our main character is both black and puerto rican and how one doesn't negate the other and one doesn't cancel out the other it talks about culture and heritage it comes through with the food as well i have learned some stuff about food from this book and just uh, like Puerto Rican history a little dash of uh, education in this as well in this recipe of a book I'm gonna stop trying to make that them kind of puns work because it's not working is it <laughs> but I really enjoyed it it's a great YA contemporary it's not my usual favorite kind of book but Elizabeth Acevedo the way that she writes the main focus I wouldn't even say it's like a romance either that plays a part but it's not that heavy on the romance but yeah I still rooted for it I'm just happy it wasn't the main focus and um, the main focus is on her her growth and her drive to pursue her dreams it's also like sex positive as well just talk about sex and relationships and another thing I loved about Imani as well is that she has such poise and grace there's a lot of there's a lot of like interactions she'll have where people will look down on her for you know being such a young mother or assume things about her and she handles it so well and I just I have a lot like I said I have a lot of respect for this fictional character highly recommend I would say I probably enjoyed the poet X slightly more and I don't quite know why exactly, but this is still a four star um, rating from me. So I'm very happy I read it this week. So I, yeah, I only read this and the first 150 pages of this and then like two chapters of Dreams of Gods and Monsters this week. But I'm hoping from now on, I, I think I've just been kind of struggling to juggle everything because I'm now working full time and um, after a long busy day of work I don't necessarily have the mental energy to pick up a book I'd rather just watch some mindless TV so I'm going to try my best from now on to maybe set myself like a daily page count see how we do with that I'm not usually good with deadlines but I am really excited to read the books I just don't have the motivation necessarily all the time to actually pick them up so maybe that will do it for me because I have like some really exciting ones to read next week but before we close out the vlog actually you never guess <laughs> yup I maybe should have unboxed this first but I feel like the majority of this vlog has been unboxed actually you know that's probably a good thing because I didn't read a ton this week I have a lot to say about what I read so it maybe is a good thing that I did have so many parcels to unbox in this vlog otherwise it wouldn't have really have been much of a vlog but I got another parcel and ooh, gift wrapped ones. Okay, should we start with, start with green? I feel like, yes. 
And this is from, it says to Cody, happy belated birthday. I love your video so much from Erin. Thank you so much, Erin. Okay, let's see. First one. Oh, it's Gargantes by Thomas Taylor. This is the sequel to Malamanda. And I was going to pick this up to read next month because... Um, Gav and Jade have joined the Touch of Whimsy book club. I think that's the name of it. I'm doubting myself, but I'm pretty sure with Kaylin and Lexi. So we're going to have another middle grade um, readathon. And it's Alice in Wonderland theme. So you know, you know I had to. Like, come on now. So I'm going to be joining that. So I, I was excited to uh, add this to that potential TBR. So I loved Malamanda. It was so atmospheric. Yeah, this is a middle grade. <laughs> I should rewind a little bit. So it's set in this place called Erie on Sea. So it's a seaside town. Very foggy, very mysterious. And we follow a young boy called Herbie Lemon who works at a hotel. He works at the Lost and Found desk. And then one day a character, well, a girl called Violet arrives at the desk. She is lost and she's looking to be found. So in the first one we have the mystery of um, who Violet's parents are, as well as their being a mer monkey, a mystical creature that lives um, on the beach or in the caves that's said to have some kind of magical properties. It's been sought after. I'm doing a bad job of describing it, but I really enjoyed the first one. And the art, the art though, the cover. So it looks like in this one, we're following another legend of Eerie on Sea, so not the mer monkey this time. It says, has the mighty Gargantis returned? A ferocious storm is raging in Eerie on Sea. An ancient artifact filled with the wondrous light has washed up on the beach, and a mysterious hooded stranger has just checked into the Grand Naut Nautilus, Ho Nautilus Hotel. Wow. Herbie and Violet know that these events are connected and they must act fast to save the town, but their investigation may just lead them to the cold, dark bottom of the sea. I am so excited to read this next month. <laughs> Thank you so much for that one, Erin. And then let's look in the purple one. What are you? <gasps> Dude, you did, and I loved this book so much. Oh, if you saw the vlog, you know I loved this book so much. I read this in about five minutes, and I was crying after two whole minutes. I'm so happy to have a physical copy of this. Erin, thank you. Thank you so much. So it's The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. And I am going to show you the illustrations, right? So basically, this is a book that feels like a children's book, but honestly, it's perfect for every age, and I recommend it to everybody. It's one of my favourite books from this year, and it just tells the story of the boy who becomes friends with the mole, and then the fox, and the horse, and they all just talk life. It's just full of the cutest most obvious but necessary quotes, especially in my case, like if you have mental health, like if you have like anxiety or you struggle with depression, this book felt like, felt like a hug, it felt like a therapy session. <laughs> and it's just so beautifully illustrated. The mole just wants cake. I don't, I don't know, am I selling this? <laughs> I was either just having a day or I just wasn't prepared for this when I read it because some of these quotes just made me cry straight away. For example, sometimes said the horse, sometimes what, asked the boy. Sometimes just getting up and carrying on is brave and magnificent. And I was clearly having a day. <laughs> but I'm so happy to have a physical copy. Oh my God, Erin, thank you so much. I'm gonna make everyone I know read this. <laughs> and I absolutely love the end papers as well. So freaking beautiful. Oh my days. <laughs> Often the hardest person to forgive is yourself. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to keep welling up at this. But thank you so much, Erin. I'm so excited to read this one next month. And I'm excited to reread this one. I might reread this one later, actually. <laughs> so yeah, that's this week's reading vlog. I read some stuff, but I received so many amazing books. Thank you so much to everybody who sent me something this week and last week. You guys are the best. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I will be back soon with another one. Um, I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Do let me know your thoughts on any of the books I've talked about in this week's vlog. The ones I've read, the ones I haven't read. Let me know if you have any of these on your TBR or if you've recently read them, your thoughts. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one, my loves. Bye, y'all.